In 1770, Captain James Cook of Great Britain sailed across the lands of Australia in pursuit of further expanding the Great British Empire, and along the way, he discovered the Great Barrier Reef. Today, the Great Barrier Reef stands as one of the world's seven natural wonders of the world. Positioned on Australia's east coast, many tourists from all over the world come to visit the vast coral reefs and the tropical islands of the region. So, what does this mean from an ecological and environmental perspective? Let's find out. The reef's ecosystems consist of way more than just some fish and coral, with organisms such as plankton, mollusks, birds, dugongs, whales, dolphins, urchins, turtles, and stingrays. The biodiversity of the Great Barrier Reef can be compared to that of a rainforest. It consists of about 3,000 coral reefs and 600 islands, with 14 different kinds of coastal ecosystems. It's important to note that with great biodiversity, it allows for great prosperity and protection for all organisms living there. However, the Great Barrier Reef is in desperate need of help. Climate change, caused by deforestation, agriculture, and burning of fossil fuels is threatening the stability of the reef's diversity. Let's take a look at some of the reef's most important organisms, algae and coral. These two species can be considered as keystone species as they play a vital role in stabilizing the Great Barrier Reef's ecosystem, and without them, havoc would wreak across the whole area. Let's talk about how the place is being affected with the process of bleaching. Algae and coral share a symbiotic relationship, more specifically a mutualistic one, as when they come into each other's presence, they both benefit from each other. Assume that the tiny green circles you see in this image are algae, and the yellow shard and the large green circles make up a piece of coral. The algae helps provide food for the coral, and it's also what causes it to have its unique color as well. As climate change causes the oceans to become more warm, it causes the symbiotic relationship between the two to stress out. So the algae begins to distance itself from the coral. The coral then starts to get a bit tinted as well. Now that all the algae is gone, the coral has fully bleached into a putrid white color, making the coral unhealthy and extremely vulnerable just about anything causing a lot of the corals to die out. It's also important to note that pollution plays a big factor in this as well. A lot of our man-made waste is dumped into the ocean and it greatly affects the lives of marine creatures in a negative way. Now let's cut back to the Great Barrier Reef, and with all this in mind and the fact that coral is just about everywhere in the Great Barrier Reef, we can depict what it would look like in a future influenced by climate change. Notice that nearly all the coral is bleached, and there are fewer and less variety of fishes and other marine life present. Now, I know what you're thinking. The situation that we are in may seem quite grim, and truth be told, it is. However, it's still not too late to pitch in and help. Let's take a look at some of the ways to stop coral bleaching and other environmental harms dead in its tracks. Arguably, the simplest and most effective thing to do is just to conserve electricity. The whole reason why we burn fossil fuels in the first place is for electricity, so the next time you leave your bedroom, make sure that the lights are off. Another thing you can change is diet. Cows emit tons of methane into the air, and the reason why we have so many cows in this world is for beef and milk production. So maybe instead of beef, try switching to pork or chicken, or better yet, maybe even consider trying to eat less meat in general. Driving less and walking or biking instead definitely helps. So does switching to a more eco-friendly generated electric supply, whether it be solar, wind, or even water energy. These tasks may take a lot of work, but something that anyone, even you could do, is spread awareness. Share this video, let people know at the very least that the world is in great danger and that they should maybe reconsider how they live their lives and shrink their carbon footprint. So what do you think? Is it too late to save the Great Barrier Reef? Is it even worth saving in the first place? Maybe I should do something in the help. If you genuinely want to help though, then you can. On change.org, there are a few petitions that ask for making the Great Barrier Reef an Australian citizen so that it can live. The link will be in the description. But aside from that, you can practice doing all the ways to help previously mentioned before in this video. But no matter what your thoughts are on the reef, scientific evidence states that the Great Barrier Reef is in great danger of losing its great biodiversity, and there's no sign of that claim changing anytime soon.